Broadway, folks. New Year's Eve on Broadway. Everybody is happy. Why? Because they know the new year has better things in store for them. And opposite is one. Guaranteed to cure any headache, no matter how much you deserve for it. <laughs> well, let's find out what Mr. and Mrs. John Q. Cutley think about out of it. Little lady coming my way right now, you'd wonder what she had to say. Come on, Miss Law. What do you say? This is New Year's Eve. Hey! 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 Need any help? Hello, Mr. Bergen. It's hard going, isn't it? Oh, cries mean nothing to me after a two weeks' engagement in Mason's basement. Fired? An actress of your ability working in a department store. Well, that's show business for you. There's one thing, if I'm ever called upon to play the part of a package wrapper, I'll be superb. Bernhardt couldn't do it better. What you need is a couple of rooms somewhere and a husband to look after you. I might consider Charlie McCarthy. Well, you wouldn't if you really knew him. You know, Kay, I've been thinking lately that perhaps Charlie and I ought to separate. Separate? You and Charlie? I know. But people just aren't interested in ventriloquists and their dummies. Hey, you are in a bad way. Come on, snap out of it. It's the New Year. And it's going to be a good one. Good for both of us, I know. Hope so. What's that? I don't know, it might be. Edgar, it is. It's our house. Charlie, Charlie's up there. And my letter. Here, wait a minute. Here. Hey, you come back here. Edgar. Come on, get back. Please, officer, I don't like think he hurt. Charlie, come on, we've got to get out of here. What's the matter? I thought the landlady gave us until Monday to dig up the rent. <laughs> what you trying to do? Smoke us out of here? No, the building's on fire. Oh, wow, let's get out of here. Did the juggling Jacobuses get out all right? Hey, I'll juggle Jacobus you if you don't all get right, back All right, all right, all right, take it easy. All right, come on, folks, move back. Get back. How do you like a guy like that? You ask him a civil question and he... Say, I know you. Oh, well, that makes me happy. Oh, but no, there... honestly, I do. You live right up there in that third floor front. I live across the street. You see where the people are up there in the window? My house is burning, and he's asking me riddles. <laughs> Edgar, did you get my letter? What letter? She wrote you to tell you the house was on fire. <laughs> Kate, Kate, don't go Hey, wait! Stop! Come here, I'll finish the both of you. Come on, get back. Hey, where are you? Come back here. Hey, where are you going? Are you nuts? This place is on fire! Come on back here! Of all the stupid dames, of all the dumb Doras risking our lives to... Who asked you to follow me? That stops me. Maybe that thing is locked. Well, if you'd stop shouting at me for a minute, I might be able to open it. Come on, come on. Will you please get what you're after and let's get out of here? Here it is. Thanks, Kevin. That must be a very important document. It is. Don't be afraid. Come on. Let's go this way. Don't worry. We'll be out of here in a jiffy. Here you are. Let me help you. Ah, that's got it. <coughs> 
Whoa, whoa. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm all right. How are we going to get down? Let's go this way. Come on. Can you jump? Jump? Oh, yes, I think so. There you are. You all right? Yes, thanks. I'd have been down there yet if it weren't for you. You've saved my life. Oh, now, you're not going to try to make a hero of me, are you? Hello there! Larry! Come on down! The heart of the empire! That's where I live. So you told me. Oh, lady, you haven't heard anything yet. You know I have a confession to make to you. I've been sitting in that window for months looking right into your life. Oh, a peeping Tom. <laughs> yeah, isn't it awful? I could tell when you were high and I could also tell when you were blue. And many's the time you made my mouth water when you were poaching eggs over that electric iron. Whoop, let's go. Don't get back. Come on. You push me. I can't, hey, hey, well, get no, back. Yes, you can. My name is McCarthy. I... I don't care what your name is. Get back. I got it. Or rather, he did. Thank goodness you're safe. Officer, will we be able to go in there? No one can go in there. The place is a wreck. Gee, that's kind of tough. Burnt out on New Year's Eve. Burnt out or thrown out? What's the difference? Well, uh, what are you fellas going to do? Oh, we'll curl up with a nice book somewhere. <laughs> Say, I've got an idea. Why don't you come up to my place? We're having a little party. I think I can grow to care for you. Uh -huh. <laughs> Three flights to heaven. Hope you don't mind. You're lucky to have stairs. We're fresh out. Looks like just another fire trap, if you ask me. I didn't ask you. My mansion on the hill. Here's Barry now. The fire is out. Ladies and gentlemen, I brought you back a couple of refugees. Miss K. Martin, Mr. Edgar Bergen. Meet the Bushelites of Broadway. Oh, may I take your coat? Who are the Bushelites? Alas, they're artists who hide their lights under bushels. The place certainly looks lived in quiet. All right. Did you see the juggling Jacobuses? Did they get out all right? I hope so. I didn't see them. My name is Honey, honey. Hope you didn't lose anything. I don't think so. We'll know in the morning. Beer? Thank you. Beer? Mm, thank you. Uh, uh, Bergen. Quiet, can't you see I'm trying to drink? Yes, but uh, Honey Honey didn't give Charlie Charlie any beer. <laughs> <laughs> I beg your pardon. I'll uh -huh. get you some. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Honey's my partner. She's a swell kid. You'll like her. What do you do? We dance. Just at the moment, according to our agents, we're resting after a long and arduous tour. <laughs> and uh, what do you do? Well, I'm a bushelite, too. I'm resting after a long run in Schubert's honor office. Oh, congratulations. Here you are, Charlie, dear. Oh, last but not least, I thank you. I, uh, I, 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 I... Too much beer isn't good for little boys. Too much beer? No. Uh-huh. Well, you certainly took care of that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, uh. Oh, it's fine. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I will... Um... It's good. Yeah, well, I wouldn't know about that. No. <laughs> a ventriloquist. Can you beat that? I didn't think they existed anymore. When a house burns, you never know what's coming out. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to like her. <laughs> <laughs> Greetings, fellow ham. Very good. What no caveat? No, dear. Won't work as you're carrying it this year. Oh, uh, Cora, this is Miss K. Martin. How do you do? Oh. And that's Edgar Bergen. How do you do? How do you do? How do you do? This is Cora Phelps. She's working. Do tell. Well, you needn't look jealous. It's only a walk-on. I appear in the third act and say, I'm Jeffrey's wife. He's killed himself. Can you blame him? <laughs> Aren't you ashamed? A great big dummy like you making fun of my acting. It's my face, Red. I didn't know you were acting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, isn't it wonderful? <laughs> I really ought to be thinking of a place to sleep. Oh, leave that to Honey. She'll figure it out. She and the landlady are just like that. 
He is nice. Ladies and gentlemen, we speak to you from the Rainbow Room at Rockefeller Center. It is now 15 seconds before midnight. Many of them. Me too? Yes, Charlie, you too. That nasty old year has gone down. I hope the new one's much more fun. I hope so. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Oh, excuse me. Barry. Happy New Year. Looks like a good game. We ought to get in it, Bergen. Happy New Year, Barry. And a happy New Year to you, Kay. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, what is this? I wouldn't know what to call that, would you? Uh, love on a dime. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> Good night, Jimmy. Good night. Hey, hey, cut it out. What's the idea? What's all the noise around here? Oh, look at Ray. Look at Ray and the cops. <laughs> it's the uniform gutter again. Hey, it's cold. <laughs> Good night, Kitty. I'll be seeing you in bed. Good night, dear. Good night, Carl. Good night. Oh, it's beginning to snow. Mm, you'd better come inside where it's warm and close the window. Oh, wait a minute. A little fresh air is good for you. Not me. Good night, dear. I'll lay a nightgown out on the couch for you. Thanks. I'll be right down. Good night, Daddy. Good night, honey. Good night. I feel terribly guilty letting Honey do all this for me. Oh, don't worry about her. She likes it. Honey's got the biggest heart in the world. That must be the dawn. See where it's getting light over there on the top of that building? The dawn of the new year. Does it mean that much to you? Everything. You said you were going to tell me what was in that letter. Did I? Sure, don't you remember? You said it was a passport to fame and fortune and happiness. It might easily be. Are you thinking of getting married? <laughs> no, nothing like that. Well, then I can't imagine what it could be. It's a letter of introduction to John Mannering. John Mannering? <laughs> the great lover. Is he? Well, so they say. On the screen and in private life, too. He's also a very great actor. Oh, he's a great actor, all right. All the Mannerings are good actors. Well, I hope it brings you good luck. Thanks. Oh, it's getting cold. I think I'd better go. There. I guess that ought to be comfortable. Thanks. Have you and Barry been together long? For five years. For five long, hard years. But I don't begrudge a day of it. Barry's been swell. He's taught me and I've helped him. And all we need is a break to get right up on top with Rogers and Astaire. And we'll get there. Nothing can stop us. If Cora snores, throw a slipper at us. I'll be all right. Good night. Good night. John Mannering, celebrated stage and screen star, and Lydia Hoyt, his pretty 22-year-old bride-to-be, were greeted by a throng of eager, well-wishing fans as they stepped off the gangplank yesterday afternoon. Miss Hoyt will be the fourth Mrs. Mannering. The fourth Mrs. Mannering. They love him, but divorce him. Hard to be like that. How about it, Bergen? Couldn't we afford a wife or two? <laughs> Listen to the young turkey. What time is it, Barry? Uh, it's two o'clock. Oh, I'd better hurry. Hey, uh, you going to wear that hat? I guess I'll have to. My only knife was soaked in the fire. Okay. Yes? 
Don't you think you'd better phone Mannering first and ask for an appointment? Mm -mm. I've been carrying this letter around for months. I'm not going to give him a chance to put me off. Well, aren't you putting too much faith in that letter? Mm -mm. Well, if he doesn't do anything for you, I hope you won't be too disappointed. But he will, Barry. This is the beginning of everything for me. A man like Mannering can do a lot for you on Broadway. Here, try this one. Oh, honey. Oh, you're an angel. Hey, bring out the sables. Sables? I wouldn't dare. Oh, they came out of a hawk shop on 6th Avenue. Sables, get that. <laughs> well, won't they call rabbits next? You can have a third interest for $4. Oh, they're lovely. How do I look? You look swell. Oh, I don't know how I'm going to thank you. Have you got your letter? Yes. Well, I'll come back as soon as I've seen him. And if it's good news, the party's on me. Goodbye. Good, good luck. Goodbye. 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 Good luck. I wonder if she'll see him. I wonder if he'll see her. Wonder what'll happen if they see each other. Might be better if they didn't see each other. Might be better if you shut up. Yeah. Well, that's another way of looking at it. Yeah. Yes? I'd like to see Mr. Mannering, please. Mr. Mannering is occupied. He's seeing no one. Well, I'm sure he'll see me. I have a letter of introduction. From whom? Well, if you let me come inside, I'll tell you. You were saying you had a letter? Yes. If you give it to me, I'll see that it reaches Mr. Mannering in due course, and perhaps an appointment can be arranged. Oh, I couldn't do that. I'll have to see him personally. Utterly out of the question. This gentleman here has been waiting since a half after one. You see how it is? I have a great deal of patience. Very well, I'm sure I've done my duty in warning you. This happens to be a superb example of a Bokhara prayer rug. It is not intended to be used as an ashtray. Jules, it was a cloudy day. The cemetery of Père Lachaise was the slate gray of a Joseph Pennell skyscape. I walked down the path past the tomb of Eloise and Abelard, and I stopped in reverence before it. Before the memory of their love that no man could put asunder. I beg your pardon, sir. That no man could put asunder. I went on in the mist until I came to where your sated grandmother lay. And there, one by one, as you directed, I let drop the sprigs of heliotrope. It was kind of you to remember, monsieur. For a friend, it was nothing. You stupid fool. You imbecile. I told you not to darken it too much. I wanted a bit of gray kept over the temple, and you made it look like a toupee. On the contrary, sir, a touch of gray would look infinitely more studied. Stop lying. Tell me what you want. There are a number of important matters, sir. Tell me all, Jules. This letter from Lou Woodstock. Well, what does he say? You old horse thief. Just a salutation of the letter, sir. You see, you old horse thief, I sent you a play three months ago. You needn't read it. Just say you'll do it and get back in the theatre where you belong. Affectionately, Lou. Uh, take a letter, Andrews. My dear old friend, nothing on earth could ever induce me to return to the theatre. You rat. Is this it? Yes, sir. I shall keep the manuscript as a souvenir. Affectionately, John. Anything else? Yes, sir. There's a lady with a letter of introduction, sir. Well, tell her to leave it. I'm much too busy. With pleasure, sir. And a newspaper reporter. A journalist? Well, now, we mustn't be ungracious to the press. Has he a photographer with him? No, sir, but he may have a candid camera. They hide them in the most extraordinary places, sir. I'll get in five minutes, no more. Very good, sir. Uh, my coat, Andrews. Yes, sir. I do, Miss Old Rover. What's this one's name? Blitzen, sir. He's German. Blitzen, does he bite? Oh, no, sir. He's very tame. I'm sure he won't bite, sir. Well, I'm not. Sitzen, Blitzen. Sitzen. Why do you talk to him in a foreign language? He doesn't understand English, sir. But he's beautifully mannered. Sitzen. Sitzen. Lie down, Blitzen. Lie down. <laughs> A very lovely picture, sir. You may come in now. 
Not you, him. Good afternoon, my friend. I'm afraid that I can make no statement on my forthcoming plans until after the wedding. Well, that's too bad, but you are John Mannering, aren't you? Sir? What's this? Just a summons, Mr. Mannering, for non-payment of alimony. Sorry to trouble you. Reporter? Charlatan! Blitzen, nice Blitzen. Get Blitzen. That's Blitzen. Hey, Lord! How do you do? Mr. Mannering? Yes? I have a letter of introduction. Oh, yes, the letter of introduction. I hope I didn't frighten you. Oh, that's quite all right. It's safe to come in now, sir. Won't you come inside? Thank you. Would you sit down? Thank you. The handwriting is familiar. Count is very easy. I don't believe you can guess. I think you have to read it. Please say something. Where have you been, my dear? Why haven't I known? I didn't know myself until recently. Take off your hat. No, don't touch it. Let me see you just as you are. Yes, I see it now. Same forehead. Same lovely hair. Only your mother's, I imagine, is turning gray. It turned very fast toward the end. She's dead. A few months ago, I was in New York trying to get a job. Someone wired me. When I got there, she, she gave me the letter. It was the first time I knew. She felt she owed it to me and perhaps to you. And made me promise that... Forgive me. Forgive you? Oh, my dear. I don't want to be any bother. It's... Bother? My dear girl. Let me look at you again. That takes me back. There were tears in her eyes, too, the last time I saw her. <sighs> After all these years, to think that I found you. The first thing I remember was Mother cutting out your clippings and pasting them in a big yellow scrapbook. Later, I used to read the notices and pretend they were mine. Let's see, I, I played Ophelia with you and Rosalind and Roxanne. Oh, I was wonderful in that. <laughs> and of course, we went to all your pictures. I don't think Mother ever missed any. Sometimes, halfway through the story, I'd see tears in her eyes. If I asked her why, she'd say the scene was sad. Once I teased her about it. Said she was too old to have a crush on a movie star. She didn't answer, but I saw it hurt her, so I never mentioned it again. How little one really knows. Why do you say that? If I had only realized. But how could I? I was so young at the time, excitable, ambitious. Without experience and a famous name to live up to. When she refused to leave Nashville and take to the road with me, I, I thought she didn't care. We quarreled. I meant to go back, but somehow the time never came. There was always a new season, a new play. Oh, I'm so sorry. Lydia! I had no idea. Please don't let me disturb you. Lydia, darling! What a surprise! Is that new? Yes. Uh, come, dear. I want you to meet my 
<laughs> my, uh, my protege, Miss... Uh, K. Martin. Miss Martin. How do you do, Miss Martin? How do you do? I'm afraid I've stayed too long. Will you excuse me? Thank you for being so kind, and I won't bother you again until I hear from you. Will you excuse me? I'll, uh, I'll see you to the elevator. Goodbye. Goodbye. And even your address. Oh, how stupid of me. I'll write it down. I feel the worst kind of blackguard. Why? I started to tell her. I had every intention of telling her. But the word daughter seemed to stick in my throat. I guess being a father so suddenly has upset me. I understand. You can't suddenly spring a daughter on an unsuspecting world. No, I guess I'm just a vain and pompous idiot. No, you're not. You're famous. You have a reputation. And please believe me, I don't want to complicate your life. If anything, I'd like to add a little happiness to it. I'd like to feel that you can count on me for anything, as a father should. For the first time in my life, I, I can't find words. Let's not bother about telling it now. It's been our secret for so long. Let's keep it that way. Will you kiss me? I'm proud of you. Goodbye. And I'll call you soon. Goodbye. Father, protege, why do you lie to me? Do you think I'm a stupid little fool? Oh, now calm yourself, Lydia. I didn't lie you to did. you. You did. I didn't. You said she was a barber. But well, she was a barber. I mean, there was a barber. And now she's a protege whose name you couldn't even remember. Lies, lies, lies. Well, she came to me with a letter of introduction from a very dear friend. Oh. Well, all right. If you don't believe me, here it is. No, no. I'm not going to show it to you. This is no way to begin a marriage. You ought to know. You've had enough experience. Distrust heals not with proof. If you quote anything, I'll scream. Scream, go ahead. It's good for you. I warn you, John. I'm not going to be long-suffering like some of your other wives. The first time I catch you double-crossing me, I'll walk out on you so fast Lydia, that... Lydia, my adored one, how can you be so unfair to yourself? Don't you be unfair. That's all I ask. So lovely. So charming. Why, I would know more. Go on. I can feel the cameras grinding. What you feel is the beat of my heart pounding for love of you. I must be out of my mind to think of marrying you. Just plain mad. Do some more. To put those steps end to end, you'd be halfway to Benton Harbor, Michigan by now. Say, when do we eat? I'm starved. I wonder where she could be. It's after six o'clock. I don't know, but I wish she'd hurry. I'm dying to find out what happened. What makes you think you're gonna... Shut up, Charlie. Now, wait a minute now. Now, let's reconstruct this scene from a scientific point of view. Attractive girl goes to great lover's apartment to ask a favor, see? Now, let me see. If I was a great lover and a girl came to my apartment... Oh, boy, there's your answer. Barry, where are you going? Oh. He's really got his bed. Okay. Oh, Barry, I'm so happy I'm going to birth. What kept you so late? Oh, he was wonderful. Oh, if I could only tell you. Tell me what? He's the kindest, sweetest, dearest man I've ever known. No wonder all the women are crazy about him. Yeah, that's just what I was afraid of. Oh, but he's thrilling. If you could just see him or hear him talk. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You haven't forgotten me, have you, Barry? Remember Barry Page, the fellow that's crazy about you? Oh, Barry, I love you, I love you, I love you. Oh, I love everybody. Just a second. Are you by any chance making love to me and thinking about him? Oh, don't be ridiculous. That guy must be a wizard. He is. Well, the dinner's on me. Any luck? How'd it go? Did you get in? Honestly, I don't know where to begin. He's wonderful, I can tell you that much. Did he show you his etchings? Oh, people are all wrong to talk about him the way they do. He's a darling. He wouldn't harm a flea. Well, it's nice to know he draws a line somewhere.
Oh, Charlie, oh. keep quiet. Tell me, Kay, what's he going to do for you? Anything? Well, we didn't have time to talk about it, but I'm sure he will. You didn't have time. You've been gone four hours. Well, I was late in getting there, and then I had to wait to see him, and we had tea and... Look, right. I'm famished. Let's hear the rest about him at dinner. All right, where should we go? Can Charlie go, too? Of course. If you take that dummy, you'll upset the whole restaurant again. And no hiding me under a shawl. Either I go as an American citizen, or I'll stay at home in a trunk. I don't blame you, Charlie. Come in. Telephone, Miss Martin. For me? Who is it? He says it's John Mannering. But I have my doubts. Excuse me, please. Hello? Tonight? He hasn't lost much time, has he? She must have made a hit. Yeah. Oh, of course I'll come. Where and when? The Park Plaza. Meet me there at 8. All right? Look your prettiest. All right. I'll be there at 8. Goodbye. Barry. Yeah? He wants me to have dinner with him. Do you mind? Me mind? No, certainly not. Go right ahead. Oh, don't be that way. Well, how would you expect me to be? Happy because you've broken a date with me to go out with another guy? Especially after you've been with him all afternoon. It isn't like that. Oh, if you only knew. Oh, please be sensible. Mannering isn't another guy, as you put it. He's a man who's going to be married in a week. He's in love with Lydia Hoyt. She has a headache, and he's free for this evening. There won't be another chance, and he's kind enough to give this evening to me and my worries. Oh, it means a great deal to me, Barry. You know that. Doesn't that make any sense at all to you? Well, sure it makes sense. I haven't got a comeback. I can't find a flaw in your argument anywhere. It's logical, it's convincing, it's reasonable, and it's sound. But just the same, and nevertheless, I'm sore as a poison pup. That's masculine logic for you. Well, logic or no logic, if that guy Mannering makes a pass at you... Good evening, Miss Mannering. Good evening, madam. Your table is ready. Thank you. May I suggest the pump on the sir, based from Palm Beach by train this morning. I'm going to leave it to you in time. But remember, this is a very special occasion. Thank you, sir. What are you smiling at? Not at anything. Just about everything. You know, to be perfectly frank, I'm not altogether sorry that Lydia had a headache this evening. What would Lydia do to you if she heard that? Ooh, I shudder to think. But don't misunderstand me. I don't. It's just that it's so nice to have this evening all alone with you, Kay. It's John Mannering and Lydia. What's Lydia wearing? That isn't Lydia. Stop squinting and eat your dinner. Now, tell me all about yourself. Where you live, how you live, who your friends are, how broke you are. I'm not broke. The money's holding out carefully budgeted. The only trouble is the money and the budget don't seem to come out together at the end of the month. <laughs> No Mannering ever made a budget, let alone live up to it. You won't have to worry about that anymore, my dear. You'll sprain your neck if you're not careful. I don't care. I think it's terrible. Three weeks until the wedding and he's out with another girl. You wouldn't be calling Lydia, would you? Don't be absurd. The nearest telephone is right out there. Hello? Lydia? Darling, this is Maud. Maud, dear. Maud Raleigh. Oh, hello. Aren't you well? John and I are both worn out. We've been going so hard. I'll be glad when the wedding's over. Oh, then everything is all right. Oh, I'm so relieved. When I saw John come in with someone else, and someone so attractive, my dear, I got positively jittery. Why, where are you calling from? The Park Plaza. But I did want to call up and find out if everything was all right. Of course, John was a sensation when he walked in, as usual. Sarah. Sarah! Yes, sir. I'm going out. Yes. We've been very lucky. We've skipped all the bad parts. 
You've never had to lecture me because I flunked algebra. You've never had to decide about schools and report cards and taffeta party dresses, whether I should bob my hair, whether Joe Blutz was a proper boyfriend for me. Was he, Catherine? He was the butcher's son. Oh, most unsuitable. I haven't seen him since I was 13. And there hasn't been anyone since? Oh, one or two. One or two? Well, one. One at a time is enough. I found it that way with my wives. You're very frank about them. Well, I never take my wives too personally. I don't allow myself to become too deeply attached because I hate to suffer. You see, I know so well in advance that the time is coming when they can't stand it any longer. They'll have to divorce me. It's self-protection. Didn't it ever strike you to be so nice and faithful that they wouldn't want to divorce you? I always think I am. Then something happens. But with Lydia, it's going to be different. Good evening, Mother. Good evening. Is Madame looking for someone? Well, yes, sir. Never mind. I found him. Shall we dance? I'd love to. Catherine, will you excuse me a moment, my dear? I fear that I'm in a slight predicament. Why, of course. Lydia, now wait a minute. Let go of that door. Not until you promise to listen I'm to me. I'm listening to you for the last time. You're not going to make a fool out of me. Lydia, this is why you're being foolish. I told you this afternoon I wouldn't tolerate your two-timing. Let go of the door. Lydia, you're making a scene. Let go of that door. I'll scream. Mr. Mallory, may I have your autograph? Oh, yes, oh don't bother me. <laughs> Sorry. Well, please make up your mind. To one side or the other, I'm trying to get out. Lydia, Lydia, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Give me a cab, quick, Carson. Well, what are you staring Carson. at? I apologize, didn't I? Follow that cab, quick. I'd better not wait any longer. Something must have happened. Very good, madame. Oh, but I was with Mr. Mannering. Oh, the maitre d'hôtel, he is gone for the night, madame. I am only a waiter. I couldn't take the responsibility. Twenty-one dollars? For chicken? Poulet tetrazini garni sous cloche is not exactly chicken, madame. Well, uh, could I use your phone? Why, certainly, madame. This way, please. Larry, that's where the lift comes in. All right, all right. So I forgot the lift. What's the matter with you tonight? Oh, it's 11 o'clock. Generally gets to be around this time. Will we finally get a chance for a job? But it was only a chance. Let's drop the whole thing for tonight, huh? You know, she ought to be home by now. Oh, that's it, huh? Still worried about Kay and the big bad wolf? You act as though she were made of whipped cream. Believe it or not, the big city's a lot kinder to little girls from the country than it used to be. Especially if they've got letters to the right people. Oh, it's easy enough for you to talk like that. You've been around, but Kay is different. So was I once. I had hay in my hair, too, but it shook out fast after two seasons in the chorus. And no casualties, either. So stop being a rover boy. I guess I do sound like that. But every time I think of her having dinner with that guy, I could kick the ceiling off. Well, that's the way it is, huh? I guess I'm silly, but I've never been in love before. No? I don't know whether I like it or not. Who is it? Mr. Page, you want it on the phone. Thanks. Hello? Barry? It's Kay. Mr. Mannering was called away suddenly, and I'm stuck with a check. 
It's twenty-one dollars. Twenty-one dollars? What did you have? Platinum pheasant stuffed with pearl? Oh, Barry, please be serious. Do you think you could raise it? Yes, I guess so. I uh, may have to touch the landlady. What'll I tell her? All right, honey, you sit tight. I'll be right over. Oh, Mrs. Meggs. Yes, Mr. Page. Can you let me have $20? I cannot, Mr. Page. Well, it's for Kay. She's been in an accident. I'm very sorry, Mr. Page. I trust it won't be fatal. What's the matter, Barry? Kay's in a jam. She needs 20 bucks. Is she in jail? No, in the Park Plaza. She's stuck with a check. I thought she went out with Mannering, the great picture star. She did. How much money do you girls got? Well, of all the nerves. See what Bergen's got. It won't be money, I can tell you that much. Bergen, open up the penny bank. Snow White's in trouble again. Good evening, Miss Martin. Well, fancy meeting you here. Did you get it? Oh, yes, I finally got it. I had to take up a collection to do it, though. Won't you join me in a cup of tea? I understand it's only $10 a pot at this place. Oh, Barry, please get me out. I've been sitting here for hours. Waiter. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-one. There you are. I deeply regret this inconvenience, sir. Of course, Miss Martin will never dine here again. You know that, don't you? Never, sir. I was in hopes. Never under any circumstances. Come, dear. Oh, it was like a nightmare sitting in there. Well, uh, what do you suppose happened to his royal nibs? I'd rather not talk about it, Barry. Thanks, Barry. It was sweet of you to rescue me. I'll pay you back in the morning. And where will you get the money in the morning? Oh, I have a little in the bank. No. So the lady has money in the bank. The lady has money in the bank. Barry, what did he say? He said the lady has money in the bank. <laughs> oh, silly. <laughs> you fool. Well, you have money in the bank. Shall we dance? Barry, what will people say? People? Are there any other people in the world besides us? <laughs> Just a minute, I have some unfinished business. Barry! Barry, what's that big idea? She's at the top. Come on. Come back here, you. Come back here. Come on, in here. Is the opera? Who? The cop. Oh, he wasn't coming. Well, then why? I thought you'd like to run. Oh, you idiot. Oh, okay, darling. I love you. We don't need any money. We don't need fame. We don't need anything except the world for our shooting gallery. Will you marry me? If you really want me to. We may not be able to eat a $20 chicken dinner at the plaza, but a hot dog in Central Park is a lot more fun. Come on and talk to me, Charlie. I can't sleep. I never sleep. I can't even close my eyes. I know. I haven't been able to work that out yet. No. There's a lot you haven't been able to work out yet. Such as, for instance? Well, Kay and Barry? Yes. She's in love with him, Charlie. Why, tonight when she couldn't pay her check. 
He was the one she thought of. Well, it could have been you if you weren't so tongue-tied. Oh, I know, but I never can think of the right words. <laughs> I could. You should let me tell her. Oh, I'm sick and tired of you saying everything that I want to. <clears throat> What's that? Where is number 217? Over there. My, my, what a load. Who said that? Uh-uh, be careful. Smart fella, huh? Are you making noises at me by any chance? Yeah, what are you going to do about it? Ye gods, a talking horse. Hey, you're making too much noise down there. You're waking up the whole neighborhood. Will you keep quiet? Yeah, will you get along, mister? Oh, a ventriloquist. I beg your pardon. I'm looking for Miss K. Martin. K. Martin? I believe she lives in this house. Wait a minute. I'll be right down. Yeah, we'll be right down. Uh, don't look now, Bergen, but I think I picked up the splinter. <laughs> wonder what he wants. <laughs> well, well. <laughs> He's wonderful. <laughs> this is a strange time to be making a call. But I'm not making a call. I wouldn't come at this hour if it wasn't important. Well, hadn't you better wait until later? No, I want to see you now. Well, all right. <laughs> if you come up to my room, I'll see if I can get Miss Martin for you. What a funny little fellow. You're quite amusing, young man. Do you know that? <laughs> Shall I take a poke at him? <laughs> Certainly not. The gentleman is paying you a compliment. Uh, tell me, how does he work? Well, he doesn't. I do it all. That's why neither of us work. <laughs> What's he laughing at? <laughs> how did you get so cropped? I beg your pardon. No way to talk to a stranger. Oh, well, let me put it another way. If it isn't too embarrassing a question, where, pray, did you get the snoot for? <laughs> Cute little fella. If he said cute, I'll mow him down. Easy, Charlie. I'll clip him, so help me. <laughs> what do you suppose that is? Sounds like Bergen. I hope it's not the termites whittling at Charlie. For the love of Pete, what's all that racket? What's going on here? Oh, this gentleman wants to see Kay. Gentleman? Where's any gentleman? Allow me to introduce myself, ladies. My name is Mannering. John Mannering. It's him, all right, and is he boiled? Sorry if I've disturbed you, ladies. Hmm? Kay, Kay. Yes? It's Edgar. John Mannering is downstairs, and he wants to see you. Wait a minute. What did you say? John Mannering is downstairs, and he wants to see you. John Mannering? Are you sure? I'm positive. Oh, Mr. Mannering, I have my album, but would you autograph my wall? <laughs> <laughs> oh, cousin, dear, I should just tell you. Edgar, may I use your room for a moment? Certainly. Well, there he is. You know, Catherine, this is a great talent. I thought that I'd seen everything in my life, but this is too extraordinary. Mr. Mannering, may I speak to you alone? Would you excuse us, please? I owe you an apology. You're disappointed in me, aren't you? I don't know what to think. Would you like a cup of coffee? No, no, I'll be all right. I shouldn't have come here like this tonight, but I wanted to explain. Lydia saw us at the plaza. Had a scene. It's all over, Catherine. Over? Because of me? Yes. And you didn't tell her even then? I couldn't. But why? She wouldn't let me. She wouldn't even listen to me. Now that it's over, 
I don't care. Well, someday you're going to hate me for this. You'll wish I'd never come. Don't say that. Well, that's a sign of prosperity. More handkerchiefs than mirrors face. Come in. Good morning, lady. Hi, Barry. We can have that booking in Pittsburgh. Oh, swell. Is, uh, is Kay here? No, she isn't. I'll say she isn't. Where is she? She had to go out. I'll say she had to go out. Out? Out where? I don't know. She didn't tell me. Say, what's going on here? Oh, don't mind us, old boy. We didn't get much sleep last night. The traffic was terrific. Come on, come on, Cora. What's on your mind? Mine? Not a thing, old boy. Not a thing. Honey, what's she talking about? Mannering dropped in to see Kay. Mannering? When? At 4 a.m. as the crow flies. He was a little tight. Plastered. And probably just wanted to apologize to Kay for leaving her at the Park Plaza. At least that's what we think. Of course, we couldn't hear much after they closed the door. Kay took him home. Oh, she did? It was the only thing she could do, Barry. <laughs> oh, my, 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 my. So this is the way the idle rich live, huh? Charlie. You see, Bergen, if you were only a dramatic actor, we could have all this junk, I mean, fouled around. Oh, Charlie, I work very hard for all this. Oh, come, come. All you do is mug a little and have a popular leading lady. <laughs> Andrews, some more coffee, please, for Mr. Bergen and Mr. McCarthy. Yes, yes, just put a head on it, sauce. Ah. Putting on a little weight, aren't you, Andrews? Yeah, oh, no, excuse me. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, that's quite all right, old fellow. I do it myself sometimes. <laughs> uh, no sense of humor at all. <laughs> you know, Bergen, it's an outrage that the public doesn't know Charlie. He ought to be working constantly. That's what I say. Well, we haven't worked for months. I'm afraid ventriloquism is a thing of the past. Well, I don't be... Andrews, get Mr. Cummings at the Lambs Club on the telephone. Very good, sir. Uh, make it snappy, Andrews, will you? What are you going to do? I'm going to try to get Charlie the chance he deserves. Oh, that'll be wonderful. Did you hear that, Bergen? Now, I don't want you to try to horn in on this thing either. Mr. Cummings, please. Yeah, Mr. Cummings, oh. Andrew, let me talk to you, please. Hello, Tony. This is John Mannering talking. Hey, Tony, uh, what is our next gamble? Sunday week. Oh, well, that's splendid. I've got a specialty act that I want you to put in. The name is Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy. <laughs> that's all I'm going to tell you. I'll let them talk for themselves. When can you see them? Well, uh, how long will you be there? All right. I'll send them over. Thanks very much, Tony. Goodbye. Right away? Oh, there's no hurry. Oh, that's what you think. Mr. Mannering, I can't begin to express. Well, I mean, after all, you're a stranger. Uh, I mean, well, I hope that... <laughs> Why don't you let Charlie say it? Yeah, what he's trying to say is thanks. <laughs> and they called me a dummy. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if I could have some paper to wrap Charlie in. Andrew, some paper, please. What's the idea of wrapping me up? What, are you ashamed of me? Always why insult uh, Andrew and other... Can't go out in broad daylight in a full dress suit. <laughs> Pushed around. I think we'd better wrap him up on the floor. On the floor, right. in the alley. Oh, that's nice. Thank you. I'm sorry. Uh, easy, easy, Andrew. You're going to bust something. <laughs> now, if you'll bend your head. No, 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 you don't. No, you don't, Bergen. Uh, will you take his hand? Yes, yeah. Well, give me a check on it. It's a clip joint. Or you move down here. Yeah. No, oh, will you give me a pillow, Bergen? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you'd better wrap up his yes, head first. Good idea. Splendid idea. I'll take it with me. <laughs> All right, Lori. Uh, what's this, Bergen? Judge refuses alimony. Oh, oh no. No, that's not Easy with my legs. Eh? <laughs> oh, you and your tootsie. Cut it out, will you, Andrew? Just use the clippers and back, yes. I don't know how to wrap him up. Suppose you get down here and I'll wrap you up. No, oh, you're tickling me. <laughs> I feel so silly. <laughs> I'll have him tied up in a minute, sir. You're terribly sweet to do this. I appreciate it. Am I forgiven? For what? For last night. Of course. Hey, you're pinching me, Lego. I can't breathe you. Ouch, you dirty double-crossing good for nothing. Well, I'd better run along before the re-language starts. Uh, you haven't heard anything yet. Goodbye, old timer. Good luck. Thanks. Goodbye, Kate. Au revoir, Mr. Mannering. I'll give you a ring tonight if I can get away from Bergen. Thank you. Uh, goodbye. Uh, goodbye, goodbye. Who am I saying goodbye to? Andrews. Oh, Andrews. Remind me next time I come here to insult him. All right.
Why are we waiting for? We're waiting for the elevator. Will you please shut up? Well, how am I supposed to know? I can't see. Hello, Bergen. Will you get down there? Kiss me. All right. Down? Down, yes, sir. Yeah, down and out. Take easy, buddy. I got a weak heart. Which is Mannering's apartment? Right across the hall, sir. Yes, sir? I want to see Mr. Mannering. Are you expected? No. Mr. Mannering sees no one except by appointment. I'm sorry, sir. Will you tell him it's very important? I've got to see him right away. I beg your pardon, sir. If you will be good enough to sit down, sir, I'll see what I can do. I beg your pardon, sir. There's a gentleman who insists on seeing you. Will you pardon me, dear? Of course. What's his name? I didn't quite get it, sir. Andrews, if you've let in another process server, I'll have you hired. Good morning. Mr. Mannery. Yes, what can I do for you? Where is she? She? Who? Mr. John Mannery. The great movie actor. <laughs> the guy that's so marvelous that all the women fall in love with so easily. Well, I'm glad that I finally got a good look at you. What is this? All my life, I've had an insane desire to twist oh, your nose. Oh, no. Out go. Out. Charming. Out. Oh, oh, don't the police. Don't you look great. Help. You'll ruin my oh. feet. Andrews. Help. Barry. Oh. Oh. Barry. Oh. Oh, you poor darling. Oh. Oh, Barry, how could you? So you know this, Russian. I'll have you in jail for this. Get out of my apartment. Oh. Oh, Barry, what have you done? Spoil the old peacock's face for him, I hope. Oh, you stupid fool. So that's how it is. He's a poor darling, and I'm a stupid fool. Barry. Barry, wait. Oh. turning blue. Oh. Oh. oh, I'm so sorry. Let me No, 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 it. no, don't touch it. Oh, does it hurt? Hurt? I shall consider myself very fortunate if I'm not disfigured for life. Oh, he must have been out of his mind. Tell me, who was that gangster? Oh, he's not a gangster. He's Barry Page, the boy I told you about last night. We're going to be married. Married? Yes. Well, things are happening. Yesterday, I discovered I was a father. Today, I'm to be a father-in-law. And in a year, all things being equal, I'll be a grandfather. If you'll excuse me, I'll try to catch Barry and explain. Explain what? That you're my father. Well, I couldn't let him go on thinking what he does about me, could I? Oh, yes. I'll be back in a little while. I'm finished, Andrews. It's all over. I couldn't stop her. She's going to tell. Tell what, sir? You'll know soon enough. Read the morning papers. Read Winchell, read Skolsky, and see how they laugh at me. But what have you done, sir? I don't understand. Don't you know that it's a crime to stay young? How old am I, Andrews? How old do I look? Not a day over 35, sir. Liar! I'm 52. And tomorrow, every housewife in America is going to read it over her morning coffee. Get me a cup and make it strong. Yes, sir. Oh, honey. Oh, hello, Barry. Where are you going? Up to the corner for a cup of coffee. Come on, I'll go with you. Anything wrong, Barry? No, nothing. You think we can still get that booking? Maybe, if we can make Pittsburgh by tomorrow. We can make it. You pack and I'll run down, pick up the tickets and sign the contract. But Barry, why in the world are you... Now, signing... don't ask a lot of questions. I just want to get out of this town as quickly as possible. You haven't killed anyone, have you? What's the matter? Don't you want to go? Sure, if you want to. Anything you want is okay with me. It's always been like that, hasn't it? Kay was right. She said you said were... Said I was what? She said you were in love with me. What if I were? Suppose I told you that, that I felt the same way about you. 
I'd say you're a liar. All right, so I'm a liar. Would you marry me? Barry, have you forgotten that last night you told me you were in love with Kay? That was last night. I realize now what a class A sap I've been. Looking for something real when I had it all the time. Maybe I needed a good swift kick to find it out. Barry, do you really mean it? Now, what do you want me to do? Stand on my head? Honey, from now on, it's you and me. Remember that. Nobody else. Get your coffee. Where are you going? I'm going to get us booked before you change your mind. Come in. Honey, have you seen Barry? Yes, I just left him. I've got to see him. Where is he? Gone to see an agent about a job. We're going on the road. I'm packing now for both of us. Just like old times, only better. Kay, do me a favor, will you, and drag that suitcase out from under the bed? Kay? Kay, what do you think? He asked me to marry him. After being together five years, suddenly he asked me. Just like that. You could have knocked me over. When did this happen? Just now. I wonder what Cora did with that clean laundry. I don't mind telling you, I was pretty scared when you came along. I thought he was nuts about you. Funny how things turn out. One minute you want to take poison and the next just singing like a canary. Oh, you must think I'm crazy carrying on like this, but I think it's swell when two people are married and work together. I'd give my life to put Barry up where he belongs. I think, I dream, I pray for a success. It's all I care about. Now, of course, with you it's something else again. You've got your own career, not to mention Mannery. You don't have to explain, honey. I wish you all the happiness in the world, both of you. Shall we go inside? I'd love to. Vic, how are you? John, how are Don't you? Don't bother about us. We know right. everybody. All right, I'll see you later. Catherine, I want you to meet Mr. Mr. Tucker. This is my protege, Miss Catherine Martin. Simply everybody in New York is here. Everybody wants to see what she looks like. You can still pick them. I wish you all the luck in the world. Oh, thank you. And he means it, too. Indeed, I do. Excuse me a moment, please. Sir, I'm Cora, I'm so glad right. you came. I thought you deserted us. Not me. Cora, you're looking lovelier than ever. Thank you. What's going on in there? Charlie McCarthy is causing a riot among the guests. Say, fine thing not allowing women at the Lamb's Gamble. I'd have given anything to have seen Charlie mow them down. Listen, I'm going to tell you a secret. Rudy Valley was there, and he was so impressed with Bergen that he's invited him to appear as guest artist on his radio program. Good heavens, what's a dummy going to do on the air? <laughs> Never you mind. I have complete faith in Charlie. <laughs> I don't think that's funny. You don't. <laughs> oh, people, people, people. I've never seen so many faces. Such a distinguished-looking mob. <laughs> We're mingling with the cream of society today. The cream? Yes, indeed. What do you mean? Well, you know, the cream uh, floats on top. Oh, yeah, yeah. So does scum. Yeah, well... <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, please. Of course. Isn't this something? Not much like the old boarding house in 45th Street, is it? Oh, I'd miss 45th Street if I weren't so busy. You're lucky to be away from it. It's like a morgue since you and Honey and Barry left. I expect Bergen will be checking out next. Heard from Honey lately? Had a letter yesterday. They've been held over in Buffalo. Oh, I'm glad. Have they uh, been married yet? No, Honey wants to wait until they play her hometown. I fell in the punch bowl. It's just crazy about you. Hmm. She's sober. She's... <laughs> uh, tell me some more. I want to be your friend. Mm -hmm. Well, you could be my friend if you'd do me a little favor. 
Oh, I'd love to. What would, is it? Would you uh, loan me 50 cents until Wednesday? No. No, I couldn't do that. Uh, Tuesday until Monday? No. What's going on here? You don't mean to tell me that you're trying to borrow money from this lady. Well, I I didn't mean to tell you. No, no. No, worse than that, I didn't get it. Oh, I <laughs> I did. Well, I'm glad you didn't give it to him. Yeah. And that reminds me, young man. What? I left a quarter on my dresser this morning. Yeah? Yes. And when I came back, the quarter was gone. It was? Yes. And we are the only two people up there. Well, there's always a... There's a... Mr. Burke. <laughs> do you realize what you've said? Yes, I do. Do you realize what you've done? I do. Well, that's the last straw. The man has called me a common thief. Now, listen, John. If I've made a mistake, oh, there's nothing you can do. I want to apologize. There's nothing you can do, Mr. Bergen. I mean, the wrong is done. Now, listen. No, 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 no. Listen, Charlie. I'll be glad to apologize. No, 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 no. There's nothing you can do. All right. I'm sorry. I want to apologize. You do? Yes. I really don't think you took it. Don't you think I took it? I don't think so. Uh-huh. And I want to apologize. You do? Yes. Will you forgive me? Uh, well, you won't mention it again? I'll never mention it again. All right. I'll forgive you. Thank you. Yes. Now that it's all settled, is it all right for me to keep the quarter? Well, <laughs> I don't think that's very funny. You don't? No. Well, then why did you make me say it? Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> that kills him, yes. <laughs> Uh, you're not so clever either, Mr. Bergen. Oh, I'm not. No. I can see your lips move. Oh, you can. <laughs> that burns him up, you know. <laughs> yes. I'll hear about this when I get home. <laughs> yes, you will. Yes, yes. Well, I'm sorry about that. Will you watch it, please? I will watch it, yes. Yes, it spoils the illusion. Yes, I will. <laughs> After all, there's no use of us both being dummies. No, I... <laughs> Well, he's still got them laughing, hasn't he? Uh -huh. The great Mr. Bergen. Oh, oh, oh. The ventriloquist, yeah. Why, you went out with the bustle. All right. <laughs> oh, I, I can do that stuff myself. What are you doing down there, George? Oh, shoveling coal. <laughs> Top it. Yeah, all right, all right. Well, where would you be without me? Yeah, well, where would you be without me? Yeah, well, you got me there. Yes, well, I'll show you where I would be. Yeah, you'd be selling papers. Oh, you? no, I wouldn't. Uh, sit right over there. Oh, that's right. Kick me in the face, all right. <laughs> more to more. More to more. more. Yeah, yeah. Come right up here. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> wouldn't you like to meet these people? No. <laughs> <laughs> There's some very charming girls here. <laughs> This is Charlie. No! <laughs> Isn't he funny? Disgusting. No, I'm... <laughs> Mortimer. Yeah, what is your last name? Well, I see. what is your last name? Who, me? Yes, you. Mortimer. Mortimer. Yes, that's your first name. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Mortimer. Uh... All right, the last name. Mortimer. <sighs> Uh, more and more. Yeah, well, that's the first name. Oh, yeah, that's the first name. <laughs> more and more. Uh, <laughs> oh, come on, don't you know your last name? Well, I'm working on it. All. <laughs> oh, come on. I know it as well as an old more name. Yeah. <laughs> more and more. Snurred. More to more snurred. <laughs> That's me, all right, all right, all right. Yes. Well, uh, are you a city boy? No, oh, I'm a country boy. A country boy. You work on a farm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you raise? Oh, corn, potatoes, and stuff like that. Oh, I see. Well, then you must have rich soil. Hmm? I say you must have rich soil. Where? On the farm. Rich soil? Yes. Boy. Well, if you raise all those products. Yeah. Yes. Yes, what? I don't know. No, no. <laughs> you must have rich soil, haven't you? Yeah, rich soil? Yes. On the farm? On the farm. No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you mean, you mean it's fur? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, mighty, mighty fur. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't think it's funny. <laughs> Are you a farmer? No, I, uh, no, more and more. Uh, just call me Dugan. That's okay. <laughs> You know, I'm, I'm, I, uh, I'm not a farmer, but I'm a student of palmistry. Oh, you really? Yes, yes. You know, I can look into your hand here, and I can read your past and your future. 
Is that so? Yeah. <laughs> what what do you think of next? Yes. yes. <laughs> now, you have a very interesting hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You notice that your fingers uh, are all the same shape. Yeah, five of a kind. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, now, your index finger, you'll notice the nail on your index finger is very broad. Yeah. There's a lesson there. Yeah, there is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. I'll never stick it in the ringer again. You won't. <laughs> Now, this is your heart line. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, the love line. Uh, yes. You were in love last summer, weren't you? Uh, <laughs> oh, my, my, my. <laughs> you mean Tilly? Yeah. <laughs> were you in love with Tilly? Oh, well, well we fooled around. <laughs> Kissed her once. <laughs> <laughs> Well, now, I'm very happy to tell you, Mortimer, yeah. that you're going to inherit $2,000. Oh, boy, boy, yes. But through legal proceedings, you're going to lose it. Oh, boy, oh, yeah. I went through that in a hurry, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> Are you making much money? Well, I make $2 a load selling fertile dirt. You do? I used to only get a dollar a load. A dollar a load? Yeah. Well, you're making good money now. Yeah. $2 a load for fertile dirt. Yeah. Great man, Roosevelt. Yes. <laughs> You've increased your product a hundred percent. Yeah, and it's the same old stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, wasn't that funny, Charlie? Oh, come on. I wasn't that funny. Just, 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 don't talk to me. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. All right. Didn't you enjoy Mortimer? Mortimer. That's the most humiliating thing you've ever done to me, Bergen. Well, what do you mean? Yeah. Either he goes or I go. Oh, I see. There ain't room for three of us, Bergen. That's all. That's all. That's all. Now, let's try. D -d Don't touch me. All right. Now, go ahead and let go of the lamp. Oh, all right. I'll clip you, so help me. I'll mow it down. Oh, you will. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're not mad at me. Yes, I am. No, you're not. Yes, I am. No, you're not. Oh, yes, I am. <laughs> That's a lovely suit you have on. Oh, you like it? Yeah. I have a new tailor. Yeah. And I'm mad at you. No, listen. No, no, Charlie. I want you to look at me. No, I don't want to look at Charlie. No, I can't stand. Listen. Do, do, do. Charlie, look at me. Huh? Look at me. You sure you're mad at me? Huh? Are you mad at me? Well, I just say uh, it was a dirty trick. I know. But are you mad at me? Well, I just uh, say. <laughs> well, I guess blood is thicker than water, huh? You. <laughs> <laughs> Come, come, smile, my dear. That's better. You know, I'm doing all this just to make you happy. I'd be terribly disappointed if I thought I'd failed. You haven't. I came all this way hoping you'd ask me to marry you. I couldn't. But why not? There's nothing to prevent it now. How can you say that? A blind man who has to be led round by the hand. I want to hold you by the hand forever. It's impossible. Wherever we'd go, there'd be glances, whispers. I wouldn't mind for myself, but for you. I couldn't have you pitied because of me. I love you too much. Then there's nothing else in the whole world I care about. It's no use, Mary. You're in the world. I'm out of it. Don't say that. Good, good. She's fine. Nice quality. Thank you. I knew you'd think so. John, I can't tell you what a kick I got when I heard your voice. I'd give anything to see you do it. Why, Lou, I haven't done a play in 12 years. You know that. I couldn't even remember the lines. I'd risk it. However, I suppose it's useless to argue. Hollywood's got you. <laughs> Miss Martin, I regret to say that uh, I'm not doing anything more this year. Perhaps next season, if you're still available. But don't you mean to say you're not going to do this play? Well, I've got to have a star in the man's part, John. If you won't do it, I can't think of anyone else. Couldn't you persuade him? Oh, no, I couldn't. Well, <laughs> too bad for me and for you, too. Well, goodbye, Miss Martin. It was very nice. And I'm sure you'll have no trouble on Broadway. Thank you very much. John, why don't you stick around a while? Might recall some of your family's ancient glories. Remember when your mother and father did Romeo and Juliet together for 39 weeks? 
Your brother did a fellow for 40. Seems a pity to think you're not going to carry on. You dog. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you change your mind... Oh, it's too bad. You know, uh, you two would be very good together. <laughs> Bye. Bye, Miss Martin. Goodbye. Bye, Mr. Manners. Bye, Joe. Would you like to do this play with me, Captain? Oh, I'd love to. But you mustn't. Not if you think it's wrong. Wrong? How can it be wrong? It's the least I can do for you. If you're going on the stage at all, it ought to be here, with me. You see up there? Second row in the balcony. The end seat. That's where I sat when I was ten years old. Saw my mother for the last time. That was a long time ago. Too long. Oh, but how well I remember that audience and their jewels and their ermines standing there cheering. And they will again soon for you, my dear. And when you've taken curtain call after curtain call, and they still want more of you, I'll come out and put my arm around you before the footlights. And I'll tell them, Catherine, I'll tell them who you are. I hear so loud in four weeks, Lou. Pretty smart bringing Mannering back. I hope you'll say so in your reviews. How's the girl? Sensational. I mean, as an actress. Well, that's what I mean. I thought she was Mannering's discovery. You look lovely. Thank you. I'm so excited I can hardly talk. And who is it? Oh, Johnny, you better call a half hour. Half hour, please. High ball glasses, cocktail glasses, cards. Yes. And uh, have the table about four foot down stage. Oh, hello, Captain. Hello, Joe. Take a look at that house. It's so loud. Half hour, please. Where shall I put these? Out in the hall. Is that the court you rehearsed with? Yes. Andrews. Yes, sir. How's Mr. Mannering? Is he here yet? No, miss. Oh. What? I've been here since 5.30. You know how he dreads a New York opening. He's always the last one in. Well, even so, a half hour's been called. You better go check on him. Very good, sir. Oh, please. You. Yes, you. Come here. I think we've had the pleasure of meeting before. I wouldn't call it a pleasure. You seeing the show? Do you think I'm a sucker? Still a blundering, hot headed fool, aren't you? For my part, I'd be very happy if I never had to see you again. I think I'll be able to arrange that all right. Oh, it isn't as easy as all that. You're still in love with her. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here. Go on in. Maybe you'll learn something. From you? Oh, don't argue. Do as I say. And when you hear my curtain speech, come back and offer your apologies. On stage. Places, please. On stage. Places, please. You're late, Mr. Madden. Nonsense. We've got loads of time, Andrew. Loads of time. My cane, Andrews. My gloves. My chapeau. Are you all right, sir? Well, of course I'm all right. Can I get you some coffee? Sir? No, I don't need any coffee. I only had a couple of highballs just to steady my nerves. Important night, Andrews. The house is sold out. Yes, sir. Miss Martin in her dressing room? Yes, sir. Andrews, that's my first line. I waited for you in the garden. Oh, yes, of course. I waited for you in the garden. 
You know, Andrews, it's the strangest thing that I can never remember my first lines on opening night. Until I get on the stage, and then it all comes back to me. Mr. Manley. Oh, Andrew. <laughs> you haven't too much time, sir. Andrews, now you treat me like a child. The act runs six minutes before I make my entrance. And in six minutes, I can make up for Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. I wonder if Barry's here. He said he wasn't coming. No, that was for Honey's benefit. He isn't fooling her, either. May I have Charlie's autograph? This is forgery, you know. Charlie may sue me. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Bergen. Oh, I'm not Mrs. Bergen. I'm Mrs. McCarthy. The scene is the drawing room of Richard Storm's Long Island estate. An evening in late spring. See who that is. Yes? May I come in? Not just now, Miss Martin. Mr. Mannering's dressing. I just wanted to thank him for the flowers and tell him I'm going to do my best. Thanks, my dear, and good luck. Same to you. Bottle snatcher. My dear, it's too ghastly. I never even suspected anything until he brought her here. What, who here, Charlotte? The house is full of people. Mary Draper. Good luck. Thanks, Joe. I need it. You don't know what tonight means to me. And when they're cheering you, I'll come out and put my arm around you. And I'll tell them who you are. What did you say? Nothing, Joe. Wait and see. I don't see why you need any help to wreck this one. Janet, I'm going home. The idea of you dragging me here away from my own guests simply because you two get here. <laughs> Miss Draper, Mrs. Tatterson, my aunt. How do you do? Richard has told me a great deal about you. Charles has told me a great deal about you. Forgive me for leaving you now. I've guests waiting. I'd like to have a cup of tea with you if you're still here tomorrow. I should love that. Mm -hmm. Goodbye, Jenny. Goodbye, Charlotte. Sorry I can't help. Au revoir, Miss Jennifer. Goodbye. Where is everybody? At supper. Richard, too. Miss Draper, I should like to have a talk with you. I'm going to be very frank. I wish you would. You're staying here. Mr. Manning, on stage. Just a moment. I can't do it, Andrews. I can't do it. Ten years of those cursed pictures have done something to me. It isn't like carrying a play in New York, where they're ready to terrify anybody who has the temerity to come back from Hollywood. But you were excellent in Cleveland, sir. Mr. Mannering, please hurry. Give me that first line again, Andrews. I waited for you in the garden. Oh, yes, I've got it. I waited for you in the garden. I hated to leave because I wanted to see your face in the moonlight. What's next, Andrew? Where it's quiet and we can be alone. Richard is an artist. It's important that his family look after his interests when he chooses to ignore them. I'm sorry you don't like me, Miss Storm. Because I'm leaving here tonight and never coming back. And Richard is coming with me. Good luck, Mr. Madden. You'll regret Thanks, that all your life. You're much too young for Richard. You're not suited to each other. That may be. But he loves me. And I love him. And there's nothing you can do or say that can change that. Don't be too sure of that. The fools are confusing me. I waited for you in the garden. I hated to leave because I wanted to see your face in the moonlight. Richard, can't we go away from here where it's quiet and we can be alone? We can be alone here? Please, Richard. I'm not comfortable here. What's my next line? 
But, Mary, this is my home. Mary, this is my home. I want you to love it as I do. Soon it will be all yours. We have a lot to talk over before that. Please, Richard, let's go. Whatever you say, my dear. I'll get my things and meet you in the car. What's the matter with him, Andrews? Just nerves, miss, that's all. You were very nice, miss. Well, thank you, Andrews. Why, well, Richard, I didn't know you were down. The others have all gone to supper. Have they? Shh. What's happened? Did you ring, sir? Oh, uh, yes, sir. Uh, bring me my hat and coat, please, and have my car waiting. Yes, sir. Richard, you're not going out anywhere this evening, are you? Uh, yes. Yes, I'm going into town. Have you forgotten your guests? He's drunk. Make my apologies. Can't you go in the morning? What's my next line? Sherman, can I even go into town? Follett, can't I even go into town without consulting you? Will you stop interfering in my life? Go on, take his coat. Your coat, sir. Will you put it on? Oh, thank you. Go on like this. I stood as long as I intend to. This girl's presence in this place is, is a, it's an intolerable humiliation. Never seem to enjoy yourself as much, Charlotte, as when you're making it. Going the wrong way. This way. Never seem to enjoy yourself as much, Charlotte. Bring down the curtain. Bring down. happened? Ladies and gentlemen, due to the sudden illness of Mr. Mannering, I regret to announce that we are unable to continue the performance this evening. Your money will be refunded at the box office. Why don't you say it, Catherine? Why don't you say that I failed you? Why don't you say that I'm a drunken has-been? I'd stay here for a little while if I were you, sir. I wouldn't try to go out. Was that Mannery? I didn't see his face. It looked like him. Oh, 
Well, you're the first to congratulate me. What did you think of my night of triumph? <laughs> I can't imagine what happened. Himself the I like what I saw of the girl. He smashed his arm. Would have been funny if it weren't so tragic. <laughs> yes, certainly was Mannering. I saw him myself. He was hit by taxi, I tell you, and badly injured. Is Kay Martin with him? Well, stick there. Call me if anything happens. Hey, Susie, find out where Kay Martin lives. Get her on the phone. How should I know? Where shall I put this stuff in the dressing room? Oh, anywhere, Edgar. Just leave it there. Shall I answer? Please. Hello? Reporters. Miss Martin has nothing to say. She won't talk to any reporters. It's nearly 11, Edgar. I know. I've got to beat it. I'm on the air in a half hour. Good luck, Edgar. Thanks a lot for everything. Okay, if I could only tell you how sorry. All right, Lancelot. You've said your piece. Get going. You know what Charlie will do if you're late. What? He'll clip your bergen. He'll mow you down. We'll do what we can. It's useless to operate. Opiates to relieve his pain is about all we can do for the present. Have you notified his family? Mr. Manray has no family, sir. He keeps calling for someone named Catherine. Oh, yes, sir. Do you think he might see her, yes, sir? Well, there's no reason why Mr. Manring shouldn't do anything he wants to now. Thank you, sir. Well, Doctor, you know, the whole thing seems to be all the Listen, operator, I told you, Miss Martin isn't talking to anybody. No, not anybody. She has no statement to make. Pest. Oh, let them say anything they like. Everything that's nasty and mean has already been printed in all those gossip columns. What harm can they do me now? Oh, you mustn't feel like that, Kay. Oh, it's time for Edgar, do you mind? Of course not. He'd never forgive us if we didn't listen in and tell him how bad he is. <laughs> And now, ladies and gentlemen, the boys who have New York at their feet, Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy. Mr. Bergen, before we continue with another broadcast, I want you to answer me one question. Do I get an increase in my allowance? After all, 75 cents a week isn't uh, enough. What's that? Uh, I'm afraid we're not going to be very funny tonight, Mr. Bergen. I'm afraid not, Charlie. Ladies and gentlemen, will you forgive us for not being at our best this evening? Because a dear friend of ours, a great actor, met with a disaster. He opened in a new play tonight, his first appearance on Broadway in 12 years. Because he was nervous, he went up in his lines. And for the first time in a long and brilliant career, the curtain had to be rung down on John Mannering. It must have been a terrible blow to his pride. If only we could tell him that it didn't matter, that every man is entitled to one muff, but we can't. Because 20 minutes after the curtain came down, John Mannering was struck by a taxi and is now lying close to death. Cora! If any of his friends are listening in, they ought to go to him. He's at the Midtown Hospital. Midtown Hospital? Where's that? Get your coat. I'll take you. Andrews, he's going to be all right, isn't he? The reports are exaggerated. I'm afraid not, miss. He wants to see you. It will make him very happy to know you're here. I'll wait for you here.
man. Andrews. Call the reporters. Something I want to tell them. Should have done it long ago. Mr. Manor, you were asking for Miss Martin. Yes, Andrews. Be sure. Be sure to tell her. If you see her. How much I love her. Darling, I'm here. Huh? But Catherine. Oh, no, darling. To think I could be so selfish and cruel. Cruel? You? Darling, you've made me happier than all the people I've ever known. It doesn't matter. But I'm going to. Andros. Yes. The reporters. They're downstairs. If you want them to come up now. Yes, yes. Bring them in. Very good. Hurry. You must be quiet now and rest. Darling, try to forgive me for being such a bad father. Oh, darling, you have it. Never done anything for you, but a father should. Great to tell the world about you. But at least I can do that. Uh, oh, doctor. Please. Gentlemen, Mr. Mannering has just passed away. Pennsylvania Station. Yes. Captain, I'm very sorry you're going away. Why don't you stay here and do another play for me right away? I can't. Not while I'm, I'm still a Roman holiday for all the gossip columns. I'd feel I were capitalizing on his death. But he would have wanted you to go on. Well, maybe next year when they've forgotten all about me, I'll come back and try again. Well, whenever you do decide, let me know. Thanks. You've been very kind. If you want to make that train, you better hurry. Yes. All set, Kate? I think I have everything. Shall I take this? Please, will you? Mr. Perkins. Hello, Andrews. Mr. Woodstock. Andrews. Excuse me. Hello, Andrews. Miss Cora. Miss Martin, I was so afraid I'd missed you. You know I wouldn't go without seeing you. In going through Mr. Mannering's effects, I came across this letter of yours. I thought perhaps you'd like to keep it. My letter of introduction. Thank you, Andrews. You, you won't... Not if you don't want me to, Miss. But don't you think it might be better for you? No, if... Andrews. No one would understand my waiting until now to announce it. If he had told, it would have been different, but if I were to tell now, it would only cause a lot more unpleasant publicity about him. I don't want that. I understand that. Hello, sir. Thank you. Oh, there's Barry. Oh, Miss Martin. 
Miss Martin, could we have a statement, please? Please, gentlemen, I have nothing to say. What are you planning on? Okay. Very planned, Mr. Martin. All right, we'll follow you. Newspaper bloodhound. Are you going home? Okay, darling. Yes, Barry. I love you. I always have and I always will. I was a fool, jealous and suspicious. I tried to forget you. I nearly wrecked Honey's life. It doesn't seem possible so many things could happen in so short a time. And all because of this letter. The letter that was to open the doors of fame, success and happiness. And now, now he's dead. Did he mean so much to you? More than anyone will ever know. Then I guess there's nothing else to say. Barry, dear, will you please read this? Please. Tell him to hurry. We'll never get to the station in time. Yes, step out of it. Oh, let's not bother. They'll never go there. You're pretty sure, aren't you? Listen, Cora, that boy and that girl clicked the first moment they looked at each other. It's that kind of a look that lasts until eternity. My, my, how poetic. Oh, shut up. Oh, come on. Edgar, is Charlie always going to come between us? Yeah, how do you like that? This is my car. Bergen bought it for me so I wouldn't have to be wrapped up in newspapers every time I went out. Oh, I'm sorry, Charlie, but you are in the way. Yeah. Mr. Bergen and I have things to discuss. Oh, you know. sure. Yeah. I suppose you want to sit on his lap, huh? Charlie, huh? Would you be good enough to... No, I wouldn't. All right. Don't be a sap. As long as I'm between you, you're safe. Why, if I leave, she'll take you like Grant took Richmond. Join hands and chorus we will sing. Through the old time, the old town, tonight, my baby. Yeah. <laughs>